Alright. Alright. Welcome, Aries. This is the end of 2021. Um, big read, I call it. Not only because it's the end of 2021, which is a big deal in itself. Because we look at all eight planets and the two orbs, sun and moon, uh, and their signs, uh, and we'll really break down this into the year read. Along the lines of love and relationship is what I'm focusing on, but I'm open to a general read too. I always think about love and relationship. Guys, excuse my voice. <sighs> a lot of allergies. Um, what I'm going to do uh, was we'll clarify with this. Uh, only the minor arcana cards that I have here I want to clarify this and right now the reason I set it up this way I did set it up this re reflects the sky so we have a transit read here if we start with the, the lowest house move up you have Mars which is represented by the tower card and tarot you know and I keep saying as an astrologer one thing you learn is when you read read the transits and learn about transits uh, you can look to the outer planets to get you the theme and how they relate to personal planets and but it's like Mars so much of the time is going to be the trigger point the figure that pulls the trigger on whatever's going on um, it is in Sagittarius I think it's at 8 today it's my Mars return basically it's within orb I'm at 10 so temperance is the Sag card which I just put here but just check it out, you know, because that's quite, just again, how tarot, just looking at astrology, Mars, that be in the tower, think about right now, and temperance is Sagittarius, temperance is the angel, and uh, temperance, that energy of which I, as a Sag, think it's the highest vibe where you're just cool, because everything's cool, you're not worried, you're not uptight, you're not overthinking, you're just going with the flow and it feels really good and I get the feeling with that whole thing it's like uh, Aries uh, something breaking loose breaking loose and I want to say I should say it's more geared towards an Aries rising um, you could just intuitively think about how this might impact your Sun energy which is also important but with the Aries rising it does give you the houses here um, and it gives us a real point of reference. So then Sagittarius here uh, becomes your ninth house. And that makes it a transit of Mars to your ninth house. So super focused on, it could be a time of education, uh, deciding you want to get more education, uh, of deciding you want to step up and become a teacher, you want to take action. This could also be changing your belief systems. And I keep saying, I think with belief systems, we have to include personal belief systems not just uh, religious and spiritual even, but belief systems like I'm no good, I'm not lovable because mom abandoned me and so did dad and everyone else and so on. Uh, these are belief systems I think uh, that also is part of Sagittarius. Uh, and it's kind of like uh, to me, I, I we go over to Saturn as the world over here because we also have Saturn represented in Aquarius now, Jupiter still, barely, it's just about to go into Pisces, and that's a big fucking deal, and then the star car represents the sign of Aquarius, so we look at them together, we really have something to look at here with uh, the Sun, Mercury, and the Pluto, Venus conjunction, exact, exact today, on Christmas, Merry Christmas, wow, um, so uh, this could be even this square, uh, something indicating uh, belief system change you know we always think of the big deal the year is a Uranus in Saturn I'm sure you saw something on that and it's breaking something open and uh, yes in the big picture it's the government and the people but in my chart it's the sixth house and the ninth house I'm a Virgo rising but uh, you know for you uh, it's squaring differently um, and that's how it's going to impact you uh, particularly uh, by exactly how the impact you know Mars has upon all of your different natal uh, positions uh, but in some way or another uh, this has to do with belief systems you know and I think it's kind of like a nice thing Mars like I not just because I'm a Sag it's like a little bit of light uh, 
in a pretty tough, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a battlefield here. You have a civil war. <clears throat> okay. So then we have also the cards representing all the planets that are in Capricorn, which is the devil card. Many people probably know. Then you have the sun here as in Capricorn. Still newly getting up. Big change. Mercury getting up in Capricorn. And then exactly conjunct, uh, keep in mind, with the devil here and the sign of Capricorn, you have uh, you have Pluto represented by the Judgment card and um, the Empress card representing Venus. You know, I just have to say, in some way, you know, Venus is in hell. Um, I'm a Venus in Scorpio. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, it, but uh, there's a really going to be a focus on like um, shadow stuff and hidden, anything around relationships uh, and uh, it's the kind of energy that the empress doesn't like to be in you know um, I don't think you know any Venus energy Taurus or, or Libra uh, it doesn't here but also have devil here so you know that brings in like some karmic stuff you gotta say um uh, uh, that brings in uh, work, you know, things we need to work on. And so this kind of a, a particular Pluto-Venus uh, conjunction uh, is us really want to work on something to do uh, with our relationship, you know, patterns. Um, and something in the, sh if there's anything going on in the shadow world, for us, I mean, it's going to come out. Like I've got... Uh, Pluto also uh, opposite my natal moon like right now it's coming back with an exact orb so uh, it's the same kind of energy it's like things are being exposed to ourselves and it might be exposed to others like also at this time you know being the uh, you know the energy here of Venus you know could be uh, some something discovered uh, in the way of a family or even at work or something to do with a female uh, something with uh, this Pluto energy that's, uh, you know, a little dark to it. it. has the eighth house energy to it, you know, devil to it. Um, and our own nature's coming up. Um, and Mercury has been in cohorts with Mars now for months, uh, conjuncting in Libra and then again in Scorpio. Uh, it's, uh, Mercury's here kind of representing Mars, I feel. As it moves through Sagittarius, but I also feel it's kind of a lighter energy too. I mean, as it moves into uh, Capricorn, uh, it's kind of a lighter energy, and Mercury now is kind of like okay, uh, maybe saying to Mars, you know, I'm getting ready to go go deep here into the middle and the late <laughs> degrees of Capricorn here, and it's going to get real. And then also, of course, it meets up with uh, you know um, Pluto. <laughs> uh, it, it meets up with Venus and then Venus and Pluto so yeah uh, all going on um, this month um, ongoing until we go into Aquarius uh, it seems to me like this is kind of settling things uh, having to do with relationship and uh, anything that's uh, unseen too which that's going to rule you know, uh, with Pluto, it's going down into that darkness where, where typically a lot of us don't want to go. You know, particularly if we have Libra energy and stuff that uh, doesn't want to see uh, bad things. Or Taurus, Venus energy. Venus, Taurus, Venus, Libra. They really don't want a lot to do with that kind of energy. Typically, if they can help it. And so, uh, Aries then... Um, and keep in mind, this is in your 10th house, too. So that's why I mentioned the thing about work. And even it could be like, you know, you overhear somebody at work that's a female and something kind of shady. Or, or if you are, you know, rumors could start. This is a kind of Pluto stuff, a uh, dark uh, kind of thing here. Uh, so I said where it's a little, a little bit karmic-y, you know. Uh, if something like that pops up and it's not you, it's like be advised it's spirit telling you to look at that in you. That's, you know, that's what that is. If we notice it, go, oh, wow, you know, uh, you know something really went 
bad for her and whatever. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, and then when we get into Aquarius now, uh, then it's easy for you guys. It's the 11th house. Uh, really love Aquarius risings. People, as an astrologer, it's so easy to work with. And it's got, you know, immediately when I start studying astrology, I talked to Aries Rise. I started looking at their houses and I started, this thing was obvious. Like, this is, I have to say, it's got to be the best, best uh, rising sign. I think because it just lines up the houses. So um, you've got uh, Saturn here moving along, and it's exactly square now. It's going to be on the 29th. It's really hammering there uh, with the Uranus represented by the fool over here in the hair font. So the world card was Saturn. Um, this, like I say, is kind of big things going on, and it's going to Aquarius, and um, it's really wanting us to... Uh, just like that, it, Saturn's always like that dad that's never going to hug you and say, I love you, probably. But but he loves you, and he probably is ex-military or something. He's just a hard ass all around. And more likely, he's going to kick your ass and hug you, but, but he still loves you and cares about you. And that's a good old Saturn here. And I think it's cranking along if you don't have malicious aspects going on with it, uh, in spite of the fact that square Uranus. Uh, I think here, um, you know, it, it, Saturn might not be such a bad guy right now. And with Jupiter going into Pisces in a few days, uh, it might be looking at a little nice energy coming all around here. And, you know, look at tarot. Now you got the world and you got the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, put those together with the star. I mean, this is, a, I don't know, Manifestation City. That's how I would read that. I mean, if you have the world energy and now the universe is coming in with the Wheel of Fortune with Jupiter, so look at Jupiter. It's going to be at zero degrees on the 29th in just a few days of Pisces. And where's that in your chart? That may say something. Is it uh, connecting with your part of fortune? You know, your vertex uh, could be, depending with, with an Aries, I would think it could be. So... Uh, then uh, we get to Neptune finally direct. It's been a huge influence um, uh, for you, uh, Aries. Um, you know, Neptune be in your 12th house. Uh, this could be all kind of things. Dreams are coming in. And, you know, it's represented by the hanged man. Okay. That's Neptune. And, of course, the moon as Pisces. So, in your 12th house, uh, if, if there's any little nagging feeling, that, that's what it is. Uh, this is the kind of thing where tarot reading could help, or, you know, intuitive astrology, uh, or just really opening yourself up, you know, uh, maybe your own creative writing or, or automatic writing and asking spirit. You know, but there, it could be a lot of power. Uh, we typically think of these Neptune. Uh, transits at 12 is being I don't know a little scary or something or, or you, get, you could be out there uh, but if you're not afraid of the unconscious one thing I like to do is write down a question on a notepad leave it next to the bed and a lot of times during the night you know I'll get a dream wake up jot down a little bit wake up the next morning put it together it's an answer to that question so you could actually communicate with your own unconscious, which I like the most of everything, because then you don't have a middleman <laughs> uh, in the way. And Uranus, uh, square and, uh, as it is, uh, the um, Saturn there, the world, you got the fool. <laughs> now, is there, uh, there's a dynamic too. You've got the fool, square, and the world. And you would think, how's that going to end? But it's in the sign of the hair font. So, you could say, you know, if you're a spiritually minded person, that uh, the hair font's the strongest card in the deck. And it's funny because now Uranus is, uh, classically, it's, uh, it, it's at fall, in its worst position, least strong position in the zodiac for the planet Uranus to operate in Taurus. But um, it's been in there a while, it's turning away. And it's erratic, and it's like uh, 
I think like when it does hit, it can be really strong. Sometimes like especially in sinistry, you look at Uranus to Venus or Uranus to Mars, like hot, immediate attraction, passion, doesn't have the holding power, you know. But I think Uranus could be coming in here with Taurus and changing things in that radical way even. Earthquakes are literal examples. But in our lives, uh, something changing. I, I always think of Uranus with the tower, but, you know, that, that is Mars. Um, now, you put Mars and Uranus together, you know, that's, uh, in, land in astrology, it's like, woo, woo, you know, asterisk that and merely bear down and look if it's in your chart, if it's in sinistry, because they're not necessarily bad. If you want shit to happen, put Mars and Uranus together and just stand back. That's the thing. Um, so, um, you have Uranus here. Uh, it's kind of crazy, too. It's like you might think, well, Saturn has all this power. You know, it's like a, a globally, it's like a, the, the status quo, the male-dominated hierarchical regime that's been around, like, forever, that, that uh, energy. Uh, and here, but here's Uranus, and it, it just doesn't really care <laughs> how long you've been around, how much power you have. You know, it's pretty radical. You know, but with the hair bullet, it's like the energies uh, with Uranus, uh, it's going to help with this ninth house energy for you, uh, Aries, uh, because it's the higher mind, and it's like, uh, you know, think about what, what are your values? Do you have religious values? Do you have other values? You know, I have very spiritual beliefs uh, in those beliefs, and in terms of thinking them through and understanding them with the higher mind in, in, in it. And then you have the moon. And right now I'm doing the reading. When you watch this, I don't know when I'm going to get this. I'm going to get out tomorrow. So when you watch this, uh, the moon will be over in Libra. So you'll be in a little bit better mood. You'll be less critical. That's good for me. Good for the reading. But right now the moon is in Virgo, which is the hermit. The high priest is the moon. So um, I just like this energy for Christmas. It's really kind of, I like it because I say, you know, me, it's Christmas, whatever. I don't want to get all into it, but uh, it's not a quite, I don't, I'm not a Norman Rockwell kind of guy. Uh, but here with Virgo, uh, it's kind of taking a good look at all this stuff. And at some point, you know, it would have been opposite um, uh, your Neptune, the Neptune, wherever your Neptune is, okay, in Pisces. Um, and that can be um, a feeling of disillusionment or you know uh, during the last couple of days or even right now you know or it probably would have been yesterday it's been the latest it might you know it might carry on and it sometimes the mood too is a trigger if it triggers something strong enough you know it ouches for a little bit longer but the moon is a pretty uh, quick but you know opposite neptune that can also be like a dream too coming in and you're like, uh, wow, you wake up and you're like, oh, all these things come together. Like a huge picture comes together in your life and you go, okay, okay. Now I can get my arms around my own life and what everything means. Uh, yeah. So let me, um, excuse me, timestamp this. And uh, I'll go to the second part of this with, We'll just pull some uh, of these cards that are just minor arcana to now kind of clarify. Because this is a little bit, it's a little bit all I do, but I felt like I want to do this. Because this is kind of the sky. This is the this is the energy at hand. And particularly now we're looking at Aries, how you're dealing with it. You know, what houses are involved and everything. So, um, let's look at what's going on with Mars, the Seven of Cups. So there's a lack of clarity, and it's something emotional in terms of that Mars and Sagittarius for you guys, uh, uh, Aries. Um, you know, it, it, I said it's about uh, self-belief systems too. So it's a same, this is the same advice for that, or like for religious or spiritual belief systems. You know, it often go back to childhood stuff, and there's something emotional that's attached there but I think it's like not making sense it's like emotionally being attached to some belief system could be about yourself and you're beginning to understand that you're not unlovable you're not whatever 
uh, or about your religious understanding that, you know, maybe not everything is exactly the way that you were brought up to believe it was cosmologically, let's say, right? Uh, and this uh, leaves you in this state of seven of cups can be a little bit of emotional uh, turmoil here. Uh, so, this is where some attention to belief systems might just be in order. You know, it's the kind of thing you just kind of sit down and think about for a minute or, or jot a few things down. You know, we get a bead on it. And now we have this Capricorn energy. And it's, you know, you, even though you've got the Sun and Mercury, it's kind of like Pluto, Venus, right? you got two big things. you got, of course, Uranus, Saturn. You can't get the elephant in the room of astrology. Now, Pluto, Venus. It's like, here you've got the building coming down. And over here, just like, I hate to say it, but it's like a woman's being violated in the dark alley somewhere. And over here, you got that something crashing down and burning with the... That's one way to look at this. That's got the devil energy here, you know. So uh, there's some dark energy too. I gotta tell you, I just gotta say with the Capricorn, I've already seen it a lot. Um, so you know, maybe a little bit extra careful. I scare anybody, but be a little extra careful. I darn well would never leave a drink and go like go to the bathroom. <laughs> maybe particularly though, wait till I don't know March or something. Um, and then Venus retrograde now the whole time. So it's kind of like, I think once Venus goes retrograde, how this works is uh, this whole time, whether they're conjunct or not, it's there. It's like that energy's on Venus and how it goes and aspects things as it goes along in your personal chart, that's where it's going to really matter. And let's see, Ten of Swords. This is being done with something. Wow. And I can link up here with the Seven of Cups too. It's like I said, maybe there's something you're you're emotionally feeling like you're not connecting anymore with some feeling about yourself, some uh, some way you want to act, you know, that you've always done, or uh, uh, could be, you know, just as an example, nothing against Christians, but you know, maybe you've always gone to mass and then, but you just really are not feeling it, so you just like that's not my thing. I'm not going to do it anymore. It'd be like a literal way that that could go. And this shows this whole uh, process is letting go of something in Capricorn. It might take a little work, you know. And it's probably something that's a little addictive here with the devil. And not necessarily drugs, but uh, this what's emotional, maybe whatever it was, there's something emotional, some kind of connection. It's just uh, not completely healthy and I think this is exactly the kind of thing that Pluto and Venus is going to expose. And the very best thing to do then is the Ten of Swords is then say, okay, now I see what's going on. Done. Over. Put a fork in that. It's done. And I, I, li I like that. That could help you with what's going on there. And Jesus, thank you, Spirit. And now you've got, I told you, Ten of Cups, it's the star. It's hopes, dreams, wishes, Jupiter. It's ready to give. You know, even Saturn, I think, is in a good mood, guys. 11th house. So, uh, if you're single, okay, or even if you're not, you could be in a, a relationship with someone from another culture, another religion. Maybe that's why things are shifting over here with your belief system to get in line. Maybe even ahead of time before you meet this person. That's how spirit works. So, uh, you get in line here with your ten of cups that comes out of this somehow. You know, it's emphasizing this Aquarius energy and probably this Pisces energy, you know. Uh, so, again, that keep in, in mind your dreams, uh, things that come to you. I mean, if you dream about a person, then, you know, maybe that's your person, okay? Ten of Cups, I mean, that's what we all want. This is, you're, you're being fulfilled here. Hopes and dreams and wishes to star, and you're getting the Ten of Cups. Total emotional fulfillment. Wow. Six of Swords. Neptune energy. I keep saying your 12th house. That's what you got to walk away from. Six of Swords is moving away mentally. And a Ten of Swords is being done and then moving away from something in the 12th house. Guys, it's probably about some kind of belief system. Again, about yourself, your body, whatever. Or religion or something that somehow was not serving your greatest good. I love this. It's like things are kind of going how they should go. All of these things in the sky, yes, we're the little people, and we can only respond, right, uh, and react and learn and try, 
Uh, but I see someone kind of doing everything right. And wow, guys, the three tins. Now we have the Ten of Pentacles. And this is coming with Uranus here. This is breakout freedom. I'm telling you, the Ten of Pentacles, I'm just getting this amazing feeling. Breakout freedom. The Fool, the Hierophant, and the Ten of Pentacles. It's breakout freedom that's completely in line with your belief system. Your higher mind looks around the world, looks inside, looks at spirit, listens, learns, and now you're solid here with the Ten of Pentacles. You know, you've got this. That's what a lot of this is about. It could be a process. All oh, this maybe is in the past. You've already done. And now you're feeling this solid energy. And the Nine of Swords. You really emphasize this is the moon. So somehow this Virgo moon's triggering. So probably what it's doing is just taking everything back, guys. So, yeah, a Virgo moon, exactly what it would do. It's kind of making you be critical again and relook at all this. But I think you're right now beginning to achieve. Look, you've got the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. So you're right now beginning to achieve this energy um, of moving completely past um, all of that stuff that didn't serve you in the, pa in the past here. And um, this would be the time that a new person would come in. Bottom of the deck, Ace of Swords. Uh, Someone from overseas speaks a different language, different culture, a little different from your usual flavor, and they're going to hit you up. And it'll be something little, but it'll, it'll be a comment that's intelligent. It'll strike you. You'll be like, huh, get your attention. It'll be pointed. It'll uh, not be a big deal, I don't think, but you'll, it'll mean something to you in a very specific way when this person interacts with you. And they may beat it. They may kind of uh, know, kind of, uh, some kind of innuendo. Not sexual, but that speaks to you at a deeper level. Uh, some kind of, uh, it'll be in a way like that. That kind of double entendre. <laughs> Where it like speaks to you and it speaks to your soul, gets your attention. Boom. Yeah, it's your person. Thank you, guys.